atrium in the Marriott Hotel. If you're uh, in San Francisco and want to drop by, uh, Kevin Meany is here, Jeff Cesario. Oh, oh. <laughs> that was Kevin. Yep, that was me. And uh, it's time now for our fabulous letters segment. Letters. Oh, we've got letters. We've got letters every day. He remembers. Yeah. Mailman, mailman. Zoom, 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 zoom. Righty, 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 Ruth. Is this, uh, <laughs> what, what news program is this? <laughs> uh, Bob, uh, Bob Vila is, mm -hmm. uh, this old Boy, house. this is professional. Very professional. Yeah, I can use this light to read some of these letters here. Uh, Dear Alex, although they couldn't be here, our friends on the USS Rourke station... <laughs> what are you doing, the whole Navy? What is this? Uh, <laughs> Treasure Island are your biggest fans. Their ship ID number is FF1053. Oh, yeah, same as our frequency. I get it. Oh. In fact, uh, uh, they, uh, while on a cruise to Alaska, one of the guys, Dave LaBaire, did a broadcast for the ship and used 105.3 as the frequency. What's the frequency, Kenneth? Uh, the, uh, the ship was being decommissioned in December, so you should give them a call while you can. All the guys are listening. And uh, they have a number on the ship. Yeah. yeah, you know the number on the ship. Good. Let's give Very them a call. Girls. That's cool. I don't have a phone today. We don't have a phone here no. at, uh, in the atrarium? Dear Alex, I was down in the atrium. Atrium? atrium. So, sorry. I Can you swim in here? I didn't know. Dear Alex, I was down in the lobby and spotted Rush Limbaugh leaving the building. At least one of the Danishes are uh, safe. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Timing. Timing. That did Timing. not say that. Timing. Yes, it did. Dear Alex, my girlfriend has only been in the country three weeks and she's having trouble with your wordy jokes about kosher food. Where, where is she? <laughs> they split? Oh, really? Uh, so if you're one of the high, what is, what is this word? High, oh, high-powered funny men, because you at least one joke in German, it would take her, make her day. Why, she's German? And she doesn't understand a word of English? She understands, uh, do you want to go home and sleep with me? She understands that. <laughs> and you understand Danke Shane. Yeah. Danke Shane. Whoa, Danke Shane. Danke Shane. Means I love you, dear. Sing it, Wayne. Donka Shane. Oh, Donka Shane. Sing it, Donka Shane. Donka Shane. I'll sing that crazy song called Donka Shane. Donka Shane. Oh, Donka Shane. Huh, huh. Donka you. And you'll dunk on me. <laughs> Shut up! Go, go, go. Strike a pose, Vogue. What's love got to do? Got to do with it? Mr. Meany. And you woo. Mr. Meany. Climb up on my knee, sorry boy. Mr. Oh, Mr. you're Mr. only Meany. three. Sorry Kevin. Boy. Kevin. And when the angels, Kevin. Kevin. they grew lonely. Kevin. They Kev took you because they were lonely. Kevin. Now I'm lonely too. Kevin! Honey boy. I hope still you know, one of the most popular songs in America. You, I hope you know you've spoiled what is my signature piece. Letters. Alex can't read the letters. Because Kevin Meany's singing like a crazy person. He's a booty man and a big guy. Do I come up on stage and interrupt you while you're saying, those tight pants? No. Uh, no. I don't do that. Let go. Let go. I'm going to write a book called Grab Hold. <laughs> Grab hold of my area. <laughs> Touching myself. Dear Alex, the weather is beautiful. Wish, uh, weather is here. Wish you were beautiful. Just kidding. Really love you so much it hurts. In case you didn't get the invite, please come to Bobby McGee's in Burlingame for our VIP 20... Is this a free plug? Yeah. It's Bobby McGee. You from Bobby McGee's? Me and Bobby McGee. Oh, really? Waitresses over there? <laughs> Who is that? Oh, really? 20th Alex anniversary celebration. I wouldn't be reading the rest of this. They weren't McGee. so damn good looking. Shut up! <laughs> Just shut up! <laughs> I'm on crack! <laughs> I'm all cracked up! 
taking crack at Live 105. <laughs> What's wrong with you? The, the, the celebrations on the 18th, and you can tip me big time. P.S. We're looking for new management. Interested? What are you, hookers? What, what is this? You're looking for new Let's sing the penis song. Okay. <laughs> Let's sing the penis song? No, oh. no. <laughs> Okay, at, let's sing don't the encourage song. him for crying out loud. Is this some sort of there. LAPD video? What is this guy doing over here? <laughs> Dear Alex, just that. wanted to write and let you know in person how much mm -hmm. I miss, miss, miss you at the San Francisco Mart. Oh, yeah, we moved out of the furniture mart. Uh, who, is, who, is, who wrote this? Oh, oh, what, what, do you do, what do you do over there? Huh? What? Oh, you manage one of the showrooms. Yeah, we're not over there anymore, so I should stop by and visit sometime. Maybe a nostalgic round trip at the Mart Bar and Grill. Poppy seed muffins on us. Yeah, we're sorry we're not there anymore, but I hope you got the roaches. I think that would be very nice. hey -oh. Let's send them to Rush Limba. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What did you mean by that, exactly? Uh, Let's Kevin doesn't need to mean anything. Kevin just outburst. flows. I'm silly. You see, that's the beauty of my style of comedy. That's the point of your end. I can say stupid, silly things. <laughs> <laughs> Such as? <laughs> well, you mentioned food. <laughs> food? Uh, roaches and somebody's muffins. So I said maybe... Roaches in your muffins. Hey, that's a new song. Yeah, Roaches in Roaches Your Muffins. Roaches in Your Muffins. <laughs> Alexi, Alexis. Oops, that's Joan Collins. Who, whatever. Where's the rug? I bought a hairpiece. No. Why? You look great. You don't need a hairpiece, man. Mm -hmm. uh, He's wearing it now. I Does Rick Reynolds wear a hairpiece? <laughs> Does Rick Reynolds wear a hairpiece? Yes. No, he has plugs. That's the truth. Yeah. And I just want to let you know that. <laughs> It's a little in-joke. You don't have to laugh. No, Dear you don't Alex, have to laugh. It's just oh, me. Oh, they didn't. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm having fun. Is it just me, or does Judge Clarence Thomas sound just like Al Franken? It's just, just you. Him. It's just you. It's yeah. just him. It is Al Franken. Mm -hmm. Or did you see him in the paper the other day? He had his hand up, kind of like this, you know, and his hand on his stomach. He looked like one of the pips. It was a uh, great thing. Uh, let's see here. Dear Alex, when, uh, when are the shrimp boats getting here? Where do we go to greet them? Will there be parades? Will the kids be let out of school? Will the department stores have welcome shrimp boat sales? Will there be plenty of hookers for the salty sea dogs on board? Shrimp boats are coming. Signed, Elmo. <laughs> Dear Alex, ditch the rug. You look much sexier without it. Marcy, Marcy, where are you? You look much Does sexier without a hairpiece, too. I think that that's... You're not I wearing agree. a rug now, I are agree, you? Marcy. I think... Uh, where is your rug? It's at, it's at home. Oh, so you, you only wear it out, or...? I wore it out. Oh, you wore it out? <laughs> yeah, I wore you it don't, out. You don't wear, I think your hair looks very good now. Yeah. Normally, this mm -hmm. is the hottest segment of the show, mm -hmm. but my timing <laughs> has been th thrown completely off. I'll have you know. Oh, oh we got David Feldman. <laughs> well, that's certainly going to save the day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Dear I, Alec. What do you mean, oh, now you're taking pity on him? Miserable human being. I Dear Alec, sing, since uh, I'm here so early in the morning to see you, can I have some tickets, a T-shirt, anything? Are the, is the orange juice free, or do we have to pay? I didn't pay for mine. You don't look 50. <laughs> your workout becomes you. You look good. What does your significant every other day girlfriend think of your new and improved look? Do you still have a girlfriend? Who sent this? What brain-damaged human being? You just want lots of free stuff, huh? Oh, okay. Here. Come here, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, you want the t-shirt? Come get it. Come get it. Come on. No, come on, get it. It's yours. Come on, it's free. It's free. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, wait a minute. Well, watch. Should be here in a second. I'll give you a CD. A CD if you come here and get it. Come on, boy. Come on. 
Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll give you, I'll give you a second T-shirt. Okay, I'll give a T-shirt to every woman at your table if you come get them. Come on, crawl on your knees. Crawl on your knees. We want you to crawl for them. Crawl for them. Now, now bark like a dog. Now this is the kind of game show I can understand. Each take a t-shirt, will you? And take a CD. Let's hear it for them. People. My audience carries with them so much dignity. Mm -hmm. That was the bark like a dog segment. That was a great segment. The last. <laughs> They're still down there looking through the CDs. There's nothing good here. They asked you to bark like. I didn't dogs. say they were good CDs. They're all in. <laughs> what? We asked them to bark like dogs, not to. Uh, not to do it like dogs. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. Pull your pants up, kids. The last time I saw you was two months ago on doing a, a, on TV doing a commercial for Live 105. You've lost weight and hair, or did you get more? I'm glad to have this opportunity to see your show live. When my friends ask me who you are, I'm not quite sure how to describe you. The words that come to mind are opinionated, rude, sexy, and very funny, Kathy Smith. That's very nice, Kathy. Where are you, Kathy? Come on, crawl over here for a t-shirt. Come on, crawl come on over. Up. Dear Alex, are you related to Groucho Marx? I would take that That's as a compliment. That's the nastiest remark I've ever had. On your wit. I would take that as a compliment yes, I, on I your wit. I take that as a compliment, although they might say the mustache, you know. No. Alex is your mustache painted on? <laughs> no. Yes, it is, Kevin. Alex was the six Marx brother. He was Skid Marks. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. See that stuff you wrote nine years ago? Dear Alex, if we can put a man on the moon, why can't we put metal in the microwave? That's a very good question. Skippy, sign that. Dear Alex, oh, are you going to commercials? Oh, we're way late, aren't we? Uh, dear Alex, I'm moving to school in Santa Cruz in a couple of weeks. Is there any way to receive Live 105 down there? Yeah, move back to San Francisco. Let me see here. Oh, heck, I hold in my hand the last letter of the morning. Thumpity thump, thumpity thump. I hold thump. in the letter the last uh, letter. Whatever happened to Web Fingers and that girl that you and the morning crew set them up with? We're going to find out Wednesday, right? We're going to have them meet. We're going to do a love connection thing with Web Fingers. Where was he this morning? Didn't show. Surfing. Okay. We're going to take a break for commercials. Is that it? You having fun this morning? We're in the atrium at the Marriott Hotel. We'll be right back. Stay where you are. Bennett, we're here at the Marriott Hotel doing a little road show, and it's a live studio audience. We're at the National Association of Bottom Feeders. Uh, gosh, we've been a good audience this morning, and this is a strange, this is a strange room, isn't it, Kevin? Kevin uh, Meany, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, it's weird. It's definitely weird. And that fabulous Meany family, America's lovable TV family. That's right. And doing who's off the air forever and ever? <laughs> it's Uncle Kevin, Buck. Kevin Meany. And who, who uh, uh, but you have an HBO special. HBO special coming up October 19th. On, on HBO. HBO, 10.30 p.m. That's what spot on the dial? I don't know what channel I, would be here. People ask you that, but I, I can't tell you. Oh. It's 22 Could you where come over to my place and tune it in for me? Uh, sure. Okay, good. And Jeff Cesario, <laughs> Jeff Cesario, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank out. you very oh, by much. By the way, Kevin's at the other. Jeff Cesario, Tommy T's in, uh, in San, San Ramon. San Ramon. David Feldman, largely unemployable. You can catch me on every after a minimum cable TV show. You know, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing who you meet at this convention because already today, passing by me is the guy uh, who fired me at W at, at this radio station originally, and then another guy who fired me at WIOD in Miami. So that that. Alex, hey, I got some news feel, for you. Don't, don't boo him. He still has to live in Miami. Okay, I think that's. Alex, we're going for the hat trick. <laughs> then. All of a sudden, like, it's some kind of flashback in my life. A guy comes up to me and says, hi, hello, you remember me? And it was Bruce Williams, who's on uh, the NBC network. And uh, the reason I remember him is because we worked together at WMCA in New York. And a few years ago, I went back to WMCA in New York, and there was this picture that was taken of all the people at WMCA in New York. 
And it was like uh, me and Sally Jesse Raphael and Bruce Williams, and they had put me on the periphery of the picture. And I looked at all the other people who were on the periphery of the picture and said, I bet we're gonna be fired in two weeks. And sure enough, two weeks later, we were out. One other person was in that picture, and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Larry King. Good morning. Thank you. Do you? Uh, Thank you. Do you remember that? Do you remember that picture? No. We were all standing there with telephones in our hands. No. <laughs> but I, 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 I'll answer any other question. But that. But question. it was amazing. You, Sally, Jesse, Raphael. I remember Bruce we, we, when when we started on Mutual in '78. Our first New York outlet was WMCA, but it was so uh, brief because we went over to WOR in about six months. I think we were on MCA six months, maybe a year. Yeah. And then we were on OR all those years. But I, I remember that, I don't remember posing for pictures with well, the phone. they put me on the periphery. Everybody on the periphery was out in two weeks. What time of day were you on? I was on, actually at that point, I had, uh, it was very strange. I was doing a show, uh, uh, I was doing the afternoons there. And uh, then Barry Farber lost the election. He was a for mayor. local talk show host for mayor and needed a station, so they fired me and hired him. And I told everybody they should have voted for him, you know. Uh, and I lost my job. Whereas if he were mayor, so, you'd still be in New yeah, York. So by the time you saw me, I was doing part-times there. Well, this is my, uh, you, you belong here, Alex. Is this a strange city, and you belong. <laughs> also, this is uh, what you're trying to this say is also only, my, only my this favorite is, city. Uh, this oh, is, uh, oh. you know, I tell that to everybody. You go around the world, and you travel a lot, and with CNN, we're all over the world, and people always ask, where if you could live one place, where would you live? that you're not living now, and it would be San Francisco. Oh, this is come just... on. Oh, that's right. Just suck up yeah, to them right now, Larry. Yeah, a little more, Suck, up to, yeah. suck up to who? I resent that. I'm so... Who's here? <laughs> the mayor is here. I, Herb Cain is here. Who am I sucking up to? I love San this is, this is a special city. I think when you spend a lot of time here, you don't realize it, how special it is, until you go other places. Uh, like most Miami. other places look alike. You know, I feel exactly the same way. I don't live here, but if I uh, could move back, I would. I love yeah. this city. Great all right, town, all right. If I, 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 all right, I feel the same way. It's a great town. You don't feel the same, do you? I would like to move out of here as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a backwater town. It's what, the sixth, seventh largest market? Eighth and fifth. 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 I just feel like an amateur living here. For I really? don't feel I'm good enough to make it in New York or L.A., so that's why I hide here. And I think the people are stupid here, too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Or you think it's a no-count city? I just think, like, it's, it's just nothing, zero. Why don't you try Des Moines? I think it's inbred. I think the only reason I'm, like, making any money in this town is because the people just have, don't have a clue. So, <laughs> Welcome to San Francisco, Larry. <laughs> try being Jewish. He is. You're Jewish, too? Uh, yeah. Well, then, Pittsburgh's a good town. <laughs> I want to, you know, uh, uh, I was thinking a minute ago that, uh, like, I'm very shy. When people are going to be on the show, I don't like to talk to them ahead of time. I never do. You, you're the same way. I was going to ask you that. I mean, I never plan and I never talk. I, I mean, the guest on television, they sit down about, we go on at nine, they sit down about two minutes to nine, and radio about two minutes before going on. I don't even like my producer to sit them down before I actually start talking. Because I don't want it, to, it's funny, but I feel that if, you, if, I, if I say hello to them, I'm, I'm breaking some kind of, well, I, I'll, I'll casually audience. say hello, and a lot of times you know the guests. I mean, if it's a senator and you've seen him at lunch that day and then you're sitting there with him, you'll... But I will never talk, ever, about what I'm going to talk about on the air. Yeah. Whereas I would never, if, if, I would, if I were on tonight and I'm talking about uh, Clarence Thomas, I would not ask the guest before we go on what he thinks. And I have no idea what I'm going to ask the guest as I'm introducing the guest. I, I, I've always worked that way for 30 years is that as I'm saying, uh, my guest is Alex Bennett, I don't know what the question is. And then something happens. That's pretty much the way I work. I Some kind of business. chemistry happens. And that, uh, it's not a lesson. If I was speaking at schools, I wouldn't say this is the way to do interviews. But you have to do what's best for you. You have to do what's most comfortable to you. And that's probably true in any business, but certainly in broadcasting. Whatever you feel the best about is the best. You can't be someone else. I work off the top. You like working off the top? I always, I always work off the top of my head, and I, uh, uh, more, uh, because, mainly it because shows. I don't think that there's any... <laughs> it was a cheap ball <laughs> joke, I'm sorry. It's a great conversation, just talking about, you know, not planning anything and just... <laughs> yeah. no, we uh, bust our tails with jokes and stuff. You guys walk in and say they don't think of nothing. No, I never, I never prepare questions because I figure you're getting into a conversation. 
And then well, if, if you are curious, you're going to be a good interviewer. Yeah. The, 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 whole, the whole secret is curiosity and ability to listen. Yeah. You got to listen because especially if you work that way, uh, you better listen because if you, if you run into opportunities with interviewers who don't listen, and I've run into a lot of them, you can have a lot of laughs. I, I was on a show in Dallas once called, uh, this is a true story, interviewers who don't listen. I was on a show called Good Morning what, Dallas. What would you say, Larry? What? Oh, sorry. Good mo Close your eyes. Okay, picture Good Morning Dallas. Now picture the host and the co-hostess. You're right. You're right. You got him down pat. And the, the blonde lady was interviewing me. And she had five pre-printed questions that she was going to ask. And she was going to ask those five questions no matter what I said. And when I was on, she'd look at the monitor. And if the camera was on me, she would fix her lipstick. She would do her makeup. She just didn't pay attention at all. She just asked questions and I answered them. And the third question was like, what makes a good talk show host? And then she would go back to doing her makeup. And so uh, the cameramen were in to me and I was into them and the director and everything. And we knew that this was an airhead who had no concept and uh, was not listening at all. So she asked me, what makes a good talk show host? I said, in my case, being employed by the CIA is a big help because uh, they, they get me guests and I give clues and these clues are heard by agents around the world and then they can blow up munitions dumps. And then her next question was, are you married? <laughs> That's the non-listening host. So you got this whole theory about how to, uh, how, to, how to run an interview. Have you ever had it go wrong on you? Well, there's no perfect interview. You know, you do the best you can. You ask the best questions you can. You listen the best. Your job is to bring, elicit the most you can out of a guest. I, I don't use the word I when I interview people. I is irrelevant. There's no place in an mm. interview, I don't think. My opinion of your movie is immaterial. It's your movie that counts. The guest counts. Sure, you can goof. I, I, had a, I did a whole two hours once with the president of uh, Apple Computer. And uh, we talked about the founding of Apple and how he got to be president. And I never asked him... He got hired by the, the original founder and fired the guy who hired him. He yeah, wound up being Scully. president of the company, Scully, and fired Jobs. <laughs> I never found that out till the last phone call. Ask why I didn't ask that, and that never came up. Sure, you're gonna, you're gonna miss things. That jumps out in my mind. No one's ever done the perfect interview. But I love, I think the first thing is to love it. I love the exchange. See, like right now, I'd yeah. like to be asking questions of everybody here. I would like to do a show where the, the curtain opens and that's where we all learn the guest. I don't care to know the guest. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. No, I like exactly that. The same way. Uh, uh, but you uh, guys are very much alike. <laughs> I'm out for his job. Mm -hmm. Don't tell him that. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> now, uh, uh, but the, the uh, who, you know, I'm not saying that, I don't want to put you on the spot on this one, but the fact is that some people, no matter how nice they are, no matter how decent they are, sometimes they're just terrible interviews. Yeah, well, really then, terrible. they are. So Some I'm, people are not. I got to ask you, who's the worst? Most, well, most people who go on, on shows are pretty good. If you're going on CNN tonight, on a show that's going to be in 102 countries around the world, you're probably a pretty good guest. The producers have talked to you. They know that you certainly know the subject pretty well. I mean, they can't make you fiery if you're not fiery. You want four good things in a guest. You want passion. You want a sense of humor. You want an ability to self-deprecate yourself. You want an ability to place the person listening in the person on the air shoes, put you on. Sinatra's the greatest guest there is. He embodies all those things. I've done him a lot. Every time he comes on, he's three. It's hard to get, but he fits all those things. Now, the classic is the guy who doesn't, the one-word answer, the person who doesn't want to be there. I had a terrible time with Damon Wilson of Sanford and Son. I have a tough time with Robert Mitchum. Mitchum is a guy who gives you one-word answers and, and makes everything so simple that he won't think in the abstract. And if they won't think in the abstract, then they won't take you beyond what you ask them. So if you ask Robert Mitchum, explain your concept, how you, how you view a role. You're going to take this job. How do you view it? He said, I read it, learn it, do it. <laughs> I said, that's it? That's it. What about working for John Huston? He was fine. Uh, compare yeah, directors. Yeah, yeah. I just do what they say. See, then I, after a while, you don't know if he's putting you on. I, was I asked him what he thought of Al Pacino. He said, I've never seen his work. What do you think of Robert De Niro? Don't know him. <laughs> now, <laughs> after a while, you got no, 48 questions here. But yeah. sometimes you can take a guess, it's a true story, take a bad guess and make him good. And that's when you feel good. And it's like a comic, 
when you go on stage, I do a lot of speaking around the country, and I like to work comedically, so I, I tell stories. And sometimes you'll go up, and it's not working that night. Nothing can always work every night. And the greatest kick to the comic is to have it start bad and then win them over. Have a bad first five minutes, and then by the end, have them cracking up, and then you feel you've accomplished something. And with an interview, I had a guy on once in Miami at WIOD in That's those studios. There's an organization called the Aces. Aces are people who shoot down five enemy planes. If you shoot down five enemy planes in a war, you're an ace. It started in the United States, but now it's international. There are North Vietnamese aces, Soviet aces, German aces, and they're a social organization. They meet, and they have an international convention, and they shop talk. They talk about war, and they're all fighter pilots. They're all individualists. They've all fought against each other. Many times they'll meet, and they find they were in the same battle against each other. They're a really extraordinary organization. You have to shot down five enemy planes. In one year, the aces had a convention in Miami. And we happen to have an ace living in Miami. And the Miami Herald found this guy, and they brought him, and they asked him if they were doing a feature on him. They're following me around. He comes to my radio show. And I was on from 9 to midnight, and he was the last guest from 11 to 12. We didn't take any phone calls. I just did interviews. I didn't like phone calls. I like long interviews. So he would come into the, he comes into the studio. This is an ace. He shot down 11 German planes in World War II. I shake hands with him, and his hands are sweating. I said to him, hi, and he goes, hi. And he sits down, I know I'm in trouble. His mouth is dry, this guy is scared. So my first question to him was, uh, why did you enlist, why did you choose the Army Air Corps? He says, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I said, what do you like about flying? It's nice. <laughs> now, I'm three minutes into the show, and I'm out of questions. <laughs> the guy is totally panicked, there's nothing left to ask him, He's and this is an ace. So what I did at that moment was, I went to the moment and I said to him, are you nervous? And he said he was and I asked why and he said because he didn't know who was listening. He had a fear because he was on the radio and he had no idea who was listening. I said, do you mean to tell me if there were a plane in the back of this station and enemy planes came overhead, you would not be afraid to take that plane up and go fight them? He said, not at all. But you're afraid of this, afraid of not, I said, I'm afraid, I would be afraid to go fight. And what happened was we took the talk from being an ace to fear. We started talking about fear. And in 20 minutes, I created a monster. <laughs> 20 minutes after 11, this guy is doing things like, we dove out of the sky <laughs> at 4,000 feet. Through the clouds, the sun burst. I could see the edge of the airplane gleaming off the side of their tongues. I saw the fierceness of their... By 12 o'clock, they had to carry this guy out of the station. I made him show business. Can you stick around a little more? Yeah. Larry King's with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Alex Bennett, and this is a live studio audience here at the Marriott in San Francisco here at the National Association of Broad Broadcasters Convention. Kevin Meaney is with us, Jeff Cesario, David Feldman, and Larry King is here as well. Wanna, you know what I got to say is difficult? Interviewing an interviewer. Sure, because they do the same profession you do. That's why a lot of people think, boy, if I'm gonna have a good convention, if I've got doctors, I'll get a doctor to interview them. That'd be the worst, because a doctor ain't gonna be curious. Yeah. The thing that makes an interviewer good is that he or she is curious about a whole body of things. And one of the things you're not curious about is interviewing. It's exactly what we're talking about now. You're not curious yeah. about radio, because you know radio. So you're not gonna ask questions about radio style, because you know radio yeah. style. That's why often, if you see sports events, and uh, Sandy Koufax quit doing baseball because he once was on with, with uh, Bob Gibson and he found himself, Bob Gibson had just pitched a no-hitter and Koufax was explaining to Gibson what Gibson did. Yeah. He wasn't asking questions because he wasn't curious. So that's why it's hard. Now you're a big sports maven. Big. And, I uh, love it, sports. Did you always want to basically do sports? I thought I wanted sports? to be a baseball broadcaster. I, 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 would, I wanted to be Red Barber. I was a kid and I used to listen to Red Barber and Russ Hodges, who later came out So here. where did it go wrong? I mean, what, what's I went like? to Miami and I started and you I went thought to I, Miami. Yeah. I was in, I love Miami. I spent 20 years in Miami. I started in Miami. And I, my first day on the air was in Miami and I thought I'd be a sportscaster. And then I got a show like this. It was at Pumpernick's restaurant. I was doing a morning show and the owner of Pumpernick's, Charlie Bookminder, liked me and he liked my style. And he said, would you like to do an interview show in our restaurant every morning? And it had no producer. And so I had no training to interview guests. We had no guests booked. I would take people right out of the audience and authors started coming in and that show caught on and Bobby Darren came in, Jimmy Hoffa, Ed Sullivan, Danny Thomas. They just dropped in, they were never booked. It became a coffee clutch scene and the Miami Herald did write-ups on it 
and it caught on. I got television almost immediately. I got a, a nightly television show, and I was doing both, and I've done both all my career, and I knew early on that that's what, that was a niche. If you can interview well, you have a special niche. A lot more sportscasters than interviewers, but and I liked it. At some point in that career, it fell apart. In 1970, one, I, 72, I lost both jobs. I had outspent myself. I was forced into bankruptcy. I was living on an ego trip. And then I uh, did some writing and came back on the air in 75. And then in 77, Mutual had this idea for a national radio talk show, which no one thought could work. In fact, I even doubted if it could work. But I moved to Washington, and that show caught on. It was, it was the right time, because AM radio was in trouble. AM was starting to fade. Yeah. FM was coming up, and AM stations we're starting to scrounge and look for things to do and talk was one of the things that AM can do better than FM. Do you think that down period made you appreciate what you got now? Oh yeah. The best, the best thing that ever happened to me was losing work makes you appreciate work. For example, the best thing that ever happened to me yeah. in my life was having a heart attack early. I had a heart attack in 87. Well, I Some that, people have all the luck. <laughs> yeah, I gotta try it. <laughs> well, it got me to stop smoking, lose 30 pounds, be conscious of what I eat be weight conscious, I just passed an insurance physical that shows I didn't, didn't even have a heart attack. So that, you know, so sometimes you can make adversity terrific, you can make adversity work for you if you use it. In other words, if you take the down yeah. period and make it up. In fact, everyone I've pretty much known has had major down periods. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. The, the down period helps you when you you don't learn anything when you win. You learn a lot when you lose. So Don Shula told me once, he's really right. I, I, I've had a theory during my life is you hang out with losers and you learn about losing. That's why I hang out with Feldman, for instance, as an example. Well, guys who lose a lot tend to drift together. Jack Parr told me once, you know, people, he'll walk into a restaurant and there'll be six or seven television hosts sitting in the corner saying, who is he? They're losers. <laughs> I mean, if you sit and worried about guys who make it, and there are a lot of people in the radio business yeah. who have a losing mentality. There's something about radio. I don't know what it is. Yeah. There's a lot of guys, no, they really, they sit around and they just get up in the morning depressed. They're going to hate the general manager before they meet the general manager. Gee, who they... would that be? <laughs> <laughs> who would we know on this dais? I'm as happy as I've ever been, damn it. Have you had that kind of life, Alan? I think for a while, yeah, but not now. You're I love my now. general manager. You love your general <laughs> well, Wait a minute, this is San Francisco. I have to ask that twice. He's been You tested. love your general manager. <laughs> uh, yeah. <no>, he's... <laughs> <laughs> he's... <laughs> he... <laughs> No, I, 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 like, I like, love the job. I love this audience. This is, this is, oh, this is the young, best part vibrant. Right this is a vibrant, great audience. Yeah. I owe everything I have today to them, and I'm going to get even with them for it sometime. Also, a lot of nice ladies here. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are there are rewards to this job, huh, Alex? Uh, it's a nice job. I got into it for the records and the women, and I got a real nice record collection now, and I'm happy to have it. So Why do these comics stare at you with such admiration? Do you really worship Alex? Is I'm he exhausted. No, we're just, we're out. <laughs> I, got, I did a set morning. at 545 this morning, Larry. <laughs> so I opened guys, the show. These guys are your fans. No, we're afraid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king of comedy here in this town. And Larry, great. I got to go, guys. Glad thank you, you very down. much. For Larry doing. King, ladies Alex, and gentlemen. Alex. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. Are we on the air? It's sort of like the heart. I'm Alex Beth. This is a live studio audience right here at the Marriott Hotel in downtown San Francisco here at the National Association of Broadcasting Convention. Kevin Meany, television's lovable Uncle Buck. Thank you. Who's Cancel. off the air forever? Cancel. But does have an HBO special coming up uh, next month, this October month. October 19th. October 19th, called Kevin Meany. Get that puss off your face special. And uh, next to him, Jeff Cesario, I'm actually a, a failed yeah. pilot at CBS. I'm actually television's lovable Uncle Tanutes, would be my. And he's out <laughs> of Oh, so you know Danny Thomas. Yes, You're correct. at the other uh -huh. cafe. Hey, are there... How about that glass coffee? Uh, top uh, table. <laughs> is that true? I just hope we use coasters. It is true. I talked to somebody who works for. I'm at Tommy T's, yeah. NBC Kevin, special is holiday. In San Ramon, you are at the other cafe. Feldman my, isn't working. I told my mother about the glass top coffee table. She said, well, I hope we use coasters. <laughs> <laughs> nobody gets that because nobody knows what we're talking about. Well, Danny would like to uh, get a. I, I don't really don't want to say. You it. don't want to stick around for our, our reviews. No. Because you always argue with. I always argue with this man. I appreciate discourse mm -hmm. so please 
stick around. Okay, all right, I will then. Ladies and gentlemen. Who are you gonna review today? We'll Here with see. our movie reviews uh -huh. is Michael Snyder. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good morning. The oh, that's report, your name. The entertainment report Schneider. is brought to you by the punchlines here in San Francisco uh -huh. and in Washington. Oh, let me just ask you one question. Are you uh, before the plug or after Are you the plug? hyping the punchline? Did you did you ever they, they put did you time. ever put down acts from the punchline? Why certainly I'll do that today. No, you, you like. don't. I try. All right, go ahead. All right. Go ahead, go ahead. Brought to you by the punchlines here in San Francisco, where you can see Kip Adada, James Wesley Jackson, and Shyama, and out in Walnut Creek, Don McMillan, Alex Reed, and Greg Burnt. And I got to tell you, folks, if I seem a little groggy, I've been partying all night with Bowie, and uh, it's been a rocking good time here at the convention. Uh, smoking the crack pipe? Oh, uh, have you God. A lot of crack smoking here you know, at the NAB fact, convention. You know, as a matter of fact, Iman does all the, uh, the copping. She does the copping, and David does all the smoking. And it's a groovy thing. It's a beautiful thing. So anyway. Top and, uh, this is what happens when you reach and, the top. And Bowie smokes the crack. It's a beautiful thing. Uh -huh. He uh, said it. I'm just... Uh, no, I... David, he's a great guy. Just kidding, Dave. Um, Barton Fink opens today. Uh, have you seen this thing yet, Kevin, down south? In La La um, Land? No, the movies no are free I haven't seen it, no. Life is Easy. Totally cool, totally bizarre film. The Coen Brothers, the guy that did, um, they did Blood Simple, Raising Arizona, and Miller's Crossing. And this is all about a, uh, a playwright in New York during the 40s, played by John Turturro, who is great, really tremendous. And he um, decides to break down and go to Hollywood, make some money, write a few scripts. And it's like the nightmare that happens to him, the living nightmare that happens to him in L.A. John Goodman is in this thing from Roseanne and, and other uh, well-known work. And he is great. Best performance I've ever seen him give on screen. John Goodman plays uh, a traveling salesman, lives next door to, to the playwright as he's trying to break through his mental block. I would suggest, you know, if you're into this sort of... Uh, so it's the, it's the, it's the feel-good hit of the fall? Not quite, no. Oh. It's, it's the feel-demented hit of the fall, okay. actually. So uh, I would recommend it highly. It's a wait in line for me, my kind of movie. Barton Fink. And, um, you know, uh, I would also suggest that uh, <laughs> Freddy's Dead. Promises, promises. The final nightmare. They told us that, but I, I really I have a hard time believing it. They wouldn't let us see Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. So it really doesn't matter then? No, not say. particularly. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. Maybe a bargain matinee for you Freddy fans. Robert Englund is back. Maybe for the last time? Maybe not. I don't know. And um, for you uh, foreign film lovers, the story of boys and girls, um, directed by Poopy Avati. Poopy Avati. Poopy Avati. That's not a name you want to associate with. Let's bring him on out here. Poopy Avati. <laughs> Stand up, Poopy. I don't miss a Poopy Avati film. I don't know about you guys. Not a, not a bad movie. Uh, set poopy. in 30s Italy. You know, period piece about a, a marriage about to happen between a rich guy and, and a poor girl. Or uh, maybe a rich girl and a, and a poor guy. I, I can't remember. It was Julia Italian. Robertson it was Italian. I don't remember. What do you got in video, bud? Uh, in video, the only thing I'm going to recommend... I Number 246. Right, we're, uh, we're on fourth, our, A limited edition, 4,000. It's worth hooks. money someday. Each sleeve has the uh, Star Trek um, uh -huh. insignia on the little uh, uh, protective cover. It's a little the 25th booklet. anniversary Trek box. 149 bucks. Oh, man. 100 bucks if you buy it on videotape. But you it's know, all five movies. $30 go to Leonard Nimoy's ears. They actually now have residuals. The ears themselves do. Um, what have you seen lately you like, Kevin? I'm curious. Have you seen any movie uh, you like? Michael, I'm not part of this uh, little presentation that you're doing here. I'm, I'm bringing you, you into know. it, babe. I don't want to be brought into it. I don't want to be a part of your little game here. My little game. You know? Wow, I sense like, hostility. I, but I, I really hope uh, that things work out for you and maybe sometime uh, you'll move on and be a member of the Regis and Kathy Lee team. <laughs> if I'm really lucky. Because I think you'd really work with them well. Do you know those guys? Mm -hmm. Have you cohabited with Regis and Kathy Lee? Uh, did you ever do their show? Yes, I have. Because I did their show. Yeah. Is it true? Follow me on this one. Mm -hmm. Sure. Agree with me. Mm -hmm. Before the show, she comes into the green room with the baby, with Cody, mm -hmm. and tries to sell it for whiskey. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> that's true. Wow. I heard that's true. Mm -hmm. Well, if Michael agrees with you, I can't agree with you. <laughs> I will be right back. Give you the good stuff in the last five minutes. This... I was on, t I did have a TV show. This is what I'm left with, this thing here. 19. You know, 18. Kevin, they uh, canceled Alex's TV show and erased the final episode, so there's no way he can end up in the Museum of Broadcasting. What was uh, the name of that TV show? Here's Alex. <laughs> oh, really? 
I'll never forget that final episode. We all kind of glommed on to one another and hugged each other, like yeah, yeah, Sue Ann yeah, and Ted, and yeah. he cried and said, I cherish you people. We're talking about the last Alex Bennett show on KSU. And nobody has it on tape? No. Let me just mention, because we give them five free plugs for listening to our radio station, the Burlingame Cycle Read, 1111 Burlingame Avenue, the largest Klein dealer. How's your Klein? On the peninsula, they're offering we rock shots installed on any, yes, on any new bike for 275 You think I'm going to do a commercial off the air? I didn't know what you were doing. 1992 bikes are arriving so we can make room for all the 99, so we can make room. All the 1991 bikes are priced to blow out. <laughs> including, uh... Including Trek, Bianchi, and... And Giant. And uh, trade-ins are always... Uh, welcome. And uh, this week say, Alex Bennett can't ride a bike. And get a free t-shirt with any purchase. That's, That's Bur Burley Game Cyclery, our latest merchant of the week, just for listening at work to Live 105. Wow. <laughs> You've got a career. Are you ta you're taking a special down the hall and I have to leave us at this time, don't you? Yes, I do have to leave <laughs> and... Um, down the hall. I'm doing a special down the hall. Oh, yes. you are not. I'm actually doing the Rush Limbaugh show. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about our weight problems. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Meany. Thank you very much, everybody. You guys have been fantastic. I'll be at the other cafe through Sunday night. Sunday night. 8.30 Do tonight. not miss him. And uh, don't miss the uh, October 19th, the HBO special. Great. Get that puss off your face. <laughs> Kevin Meany, once again. Good night, everybody. Once again, Kevin Meany, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Quickly.